faces plaguing our nation. Y'all will keep the faces in our nation. This will no longer be the American nation. This will be the American nation. Once you're a citizen, you're no longer a citizen. If you're a American, you're a American. If you're a citizen, you're a citizen. This is not a citizen. This is not a citizen. This is not a citizen. If you're a citizen, you're an American. And somebody not treating you like American, then they are not American. We're all American, and we get respect to America. We get respect to America.
One minute. Thirty seconds. What they say? I mean, I know there's nothing up there, so I don't know if we, do you have anything up? No, I just they're looking for Nat Sound. They're looking to just hear the mic. Back, you know, the pool is plenty here. It's fine. I just want to know it's there. Test one, two, test, test. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Over the past 24 hours, the President has continued to improve. He's met or exceeded all standard hospital discharge criteria. He'll receive another dose of remdesivir here today, 
and then we plan to get him home. It's been more than 72 hours since his last fever. Oxygen levels, including ambulatory saturations and his work of breathing, are all normal. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, the team and I agree that all our evaluations, and most importantly, his clinical status, support the President's safe return home, where he'll be surrounded by world-class medical care 24-7. I'd like to bring Dr. Dooley up to review some more spe specifics. Good afternoon. Just a brief update this morning. Uh, as Dr. Connolly mentioned, the President uh, continues to do very well. His vital signs this morning uh, were notable for a temperature of 98.1. His blood pressure was 134 over 78. The respiratory rate of 17 respirations per minute. His heart rate was 68 beats per minute. And his last oxyhemoglobin saturation was 97 percent on room air. He currently uh, does not endorse any respiratory complaints. And aside from our uh, evaluation with the multidisciplinary team this morning, uh, has maintained a full schedule uh, ambulating and working on the White House medical unit. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Garibaldi to again discuss therapeutics. Thanks. Hi, good afternoon. And again, I just wanted to echo the sentiment of what an honor it is to, to be part of this, this wonderful team here at Walter Reed. Uh, yesterday evening, the President received his third dose of remdesivir. He tolerated that infusion without difficulty, and his kidney and liver function continued to be normal. Our plan is to give the fourth dose of remdesivir this evening before he goes back to the White House, and we've made arrangements to deliver the fifth and final dose of his treatment course at the White House tomorrow evening. He continues on dexamethasone, and again, the plan for today is to continue to be up and out of bed, eat and drink, and, and work as he is able. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Jason Blaylock, who's an infectious disease specialist and the chief of medicine here at Walter Reed to give some updates on infection control. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, what an honor it's been to be part of this medical team behind me uh, and to care for the president. Since the president's arrival at Walter Reed, uh, he's received medical management that remains in line with national clinical societal guidelines uh, for treatment of COVID-19 infection. In addition, uh, both myself and Dr. Wes Campbell uh, have worked very closely with uh, various uh, laboratories in the area, state-of-the-art facilities to include USAMRID and RARE on uh, obtaining advanced diagnostic testing to really inform the White House medical team of both the status of the president as well as his ability to transmit virus to others. Also, we have worked very closely with the Walter Reed team uh, to ensure that uh, we are looking very closely at infection control prevention strategies and the right posture so that the president can safely return uh, to his residence. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Conley, who uh, will answer any final questions. Thank you. I mentioned it Saturday, but I'd like to reiterate myself just how grateful the president and I are to the men and women of Walter Reed, our colleagues at Johns Hopkins, as well as the many federal, private institutions that we've rece received support from. And so long as everything continues on the track that we're, that we're experiencing right now, this time, as the President already tweeted out, is to get him home later today. With that, I'll take a couple questions. He discharged back to the White House when he was given steroids. You've said that he's still on those steroids. Those are medicines, as, as you know, that are usually given to COVID patients who are on ventilators or um, with low oxygen, so did you over-treat him? And if he's still on that medication, how is it safe for him to return to the White House? So we, se uh, we send patients home with medications all the time. Uh, he, in fact, yesterday afternoon, he probably met most of his uh, discharge requirements uh, safely from the hospital. Uh, and he's returning to a facility, the White House Medical Unit, that's staffed 24-7, top-notch, physicians, nurses, PAs, logisticians, and uh, the unit here, uh, the team here behind me is going to continue to support us in that nature. Yes? What infection control measures are you taking? And how was it safe for him to drive around in a cloth mask yesterday? And how is it safe for him now to return to the White House where there have been so many cases? How is any of this safe? So the, the, the president has been surrounded by medical and security staff for days uh, wearing full PPE. Um, and yesterday, uh, the U.S. Secret Service agents were in that same level of PPE 
for a very short period of time. Uh, we've worked with our infectious disease experts uh, to make some recommendations for how to keep um, everything safe down at the White House for the President and those around him. Um, we're looking at where he's going to be able to uh, carry out his duties, uh, you know, office space, and, um, and I'll just say that uh, it's in line with everything we've been doing upstairs uh, for, the, for the last several days. Testing. Can you tell us when he had his last negative test? Was it Thursday? Was it Wednesday? When, do you remember when he had his last negative test? I, I don't want to go backwards. Uh, contact tracing for people who are around him to I understand. The contact tracing, uh, as I understand it, is being done. Uh, I'm not involved with that. Um, so. Why did you begin the recommendation that you believe, or was this uh, something he pushed for? No. So we try to get patients home and out of the hospital. Uh, as quickly as is safe and reasonable. Every day a patient stays in the hospital unnecessarily is a risk to themselves. Um, and right now there's nothing that's being done upstairs here that we can't safely uh, conduct down uh, home. You said that seven to 10 days was a window that you'd be concerned about. I don't think we're there yet. So do you have concerns about potential worsening or reversal and what are your plans for addressing that if it were to happen? You're, you're absolutely right. And that's why uh, we all remain cautiously optimistic um, and on guard uh, because we're in a bit of uncharted territory when it comes to a patient that received the therapies he has so early in the course. Um, so we're looking to this weekend, if we can get through to Monday with him remaining the same or improving better yet, uh, then we will all take that final deep sigh of relief. Um, but as I said, 24 seven world-class medical care surrounding him down there. Uh, we're not gonna miss anything that uh, we would have caught up here. Physically gonna be in the White House and how do, what does that look like? How do you keep him safely quarantined? I wish I could go into that more, um, but, but I just can't. Doctor, when did you begin dexamethasone treatment? So that has something to do, yesterday we talked about that, uh, the several little uh, temporary drops in his oxygen and we had discussed that uh, as a team and elected uh, to start it early in case that persisted or worsened. Uh, the potential risks and side effects we all discussed. We looked at the data um, and decided that uh, we'd rather, uh, you know, push ahead on it than hold and risk, uh, you know, the opposite. And what about CT scans and chest x-rays? What have you seen on his campaigning? As far as travel goes, um, we'll see mental status can you talk to about whether he has any neurological symptoms does he have any side effects from his medications any fogginess from the virus no i think you've seen the videos uh and now the tweets and you'll see him uh shortly you know uh, he's he's back yeah pneumonia or any inflammation in his lungs at all so we we've done routine standard imaging um i'm just not uh, uh at liberty to discuss Doctor, so you're, so you're actively one. not telling us what those lung scans showed, just to be clear. So um, there are HIPAA rules and regulations that uh, restrict me in uh, sharing certain things uh, for his safety and his and his own health uh, and, and reasons. Can you share how many times, you said his oxygen dropped several times. Can you share how many times he was on oxygen? You said you'd we, check we, with the nursing staff yeah, yesterday? Uh, yeah, he, yes, yes. Yeah, so he, he, uh, the two episodes, like we talked about yesterday, uh, and both times that he received a little bit of oxygen and, re and recovered immediately. Was that oxygen required? Um, no, it wasn't required. He wasn't short of breath. He wasn't looking ill. It was more of us trying to uh, anticipate needs and see how he'd respond. And in both cases, um, he came right off. He didn't, he didn't need it for, for from very long at all. You were on board Air Force One for multiple trips. Are you at all concerned about your own exposure and exposure to the medical team? I, I, I am concerned, uh, but uh, as the CDC says, there are uh, caveats for essential employees um, that as long as you continue to test negative, um, you remain symptom free, and uh, you keep a mask on when you're out and about, which we do uh, inside the hospital 24 um, seven, then, then you can carry on your duties, yeah. President's an impatient man. Has he been itchy to get out of here? <laughs> um, the, the president has uh, been a phenomenal patient during his stay here. Um, and he's, he's been working uh, hand in glove with us and the team 
Um, and today I got to the point, he's holding court with, the, with those of us around him, the whole team, going over all the specifics, the testing, what the future is. Um, and uh, and we, we have been back and forth on what's safe and what's reasonable, and he has never once pushed us to do anything that was beyond uh, safe and reasonable practice that we all first uh, was wanted. Was there anybody on this medical team who recommended against the president leaving here and going back to the White House today? Um, No. Doctor, the president said don't be afraid of COVID. Do you agree with that? Should we not uh, be afraid? I'm not going to get into what the president says. His, uh, his heart, liver, and kidney function was normal or improving. Um, improving, does that mean that there were effects? And is it all normal? Like, what's up with that? Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all normal right now. Uh, I would say he, he appeared to be a little dehydrated uh, Friday. Um, he, he, got, he was able to just drink and recover from that, uh, and yeah, everything looks great. Doctor, what are the conditions that you feel that you are campaigning out in the country? What, what sort of things do you Yeah, so the big first thing that we need to do is that there is no evidence of live virus still present that he, he could uh, possibly transmit to others. And that's what the infectious disease experts uh, and some of our partners, um, military civilian entities, doing some of these advanced diagnostics just to see uh, as soon as we can identify that. Um, routinely, we talk about a 10-day window, you know, CDC guidelines, um, but we, we're checking him more routinely than just waiting 10 days. There's a possibility it's earlier than that. There's a chance that it's a, it's a little bit later, but we will know as soon as possible. Uh, and then we will look at him clinically. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, administer hydroxychloroquine to the president during his time here? Uh, we're, I'm not going to go into all of our debates about specific medicines and, and therapies. There are dozens of therapies that we were made aware of that we considered, that we discussed and debated and, and looked at, you know, the, the existing literature on, um, and this is the regimen we chose. Yeah. Symptoms of COVID, is he having some of the muscle aches? Has he lost his sense of taste and smell? Uh, n no, we were just talking about that, what symptoms he has left. And uh, he, he's, he, even the slight cough that he used to have, uh, he doesn't really uh, complain of at all. He hasn't ever complained of uh, muscle aches. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's up and back to his old self predominantly. Next Monday, just to be clear, how long will he still be actively shedding the virus? Um, so this, this morning, I believe there was even a, an accounting by Dr. Fauci referencing a a five day, the first five days of illness uh, that, that you know, people are most likely to shed live virus. Um, there's a reason there's the 10 days is because most people by that time after seven days, uh, most folks don't have culturable live virus. They put it to 10 just to give some extra space. Um, it's never 100% you know, between everybody. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I, I can't, I'm not gonna put a specific number, uh, but we, we look at that, that window is all I'm saying confined to his residence or will he be allowed to return to the Oval Office? We're, we're going to do uh, whatever uh, it takes for the president to safely conduct business wherever it is he needs to do uh, within the residence in White House. And I, is, I wanna... he on, is he on blood thinners and also has he been using, uh, have you been giving him Tylenol, Advil, anything Oh, that came up, yet. I would like to say, he has not been on any fever reducing medications for over 72 hours. Yeah, he's, he's on a, a uh, routine regimen of, uh, you know, COVID therapy. I'm not going to go into specifics as to what he is and is not on, um, but. Did you just hear that the president had a mild cough, some nasal congestion and fatigue uh, on Thursday. Now, back to my uh, colleague, yeah. Jacob's questionnaire. The reason knowing when the president's last negative test is, is important. Uh, for that reason, your words, what you said, and, and also for the contact tracing, uh, but would you recommend it that given those symptoms that he uh, go, that the president go to that Bedminster uh, fundraiser? It's, it's not up to me necessarily, uh, the president's schedule, but I would say that uh, it wasn't until after he returned that we really sat down then knowing uh, the, the, the news of the day that we really dove into how, how are you feeling, what's, what's going on. Those were the symptoms he was experiencing on Thursday. Uh, I'm not gonna get into uh, you know, operations. What was his last negative test and what was his viral load? I know, everyone wants that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have his viral load. 
Um, those are some of the diagnostics that we're sending out uh, that will really tell us when it's safe for him to get back out and around people. I'm not, again, uh, HIPAA kind of precludes me from going into too much depth and things that, uh, that you know, I'm not liberty or doesn't wish uh, to be discussed. Um, at some future point, maybe, uh, but today, sorry. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.